combining eye lamp peeling across the posterior staphyloma and inverted eye lamp flap in management of macular hole complicating myopic uh, foveoschisis. So the aim of this work is um, what is the efficacy of combining eye lamp peeling, extensive eye lamp peeling to the edge of the staphyloma and the inverted eye lamp flap in management of these cases. So this study included 32 eyes with myopic macular hole complicating myopic foveoschisis. The staphyloma was present in 87% uh, of cases and the axial length ranges between 28.4 and 34.3 and retinal schisis around the macular hole was present in all cases. Let us see how the technique Brilliant Blue is injected, and usually I start by using the tennis scraper in order to create an edge because for me it is difficult to grasp the eye lamp from the surface of the um, thin retina. And then all the directions of peeling is towards the macular hole, and the idea is not to increase the size of the macular hole, either towards the macular hole or going around the macular hole um, in order to um, eliminate uh, or decrease um, the possibility of enlarging the hole. Usually I start far away at the arcades um, in order to prepare a flap because you may lose the flap at one time and then you have sufficient ILM to complete the task. And the eye lamp is accumulated over the macular hole. And usually every time you peel the eye lamp, um, you have to allow for the retina to um, recover the traction forces. Sometimes you have to augment the staining. And um, whenever you, are, you, are, you cannot identify the, um, eye, the eye lamp, inject again so as um, to complete the task perfectly. And here the ILM is peeled towards the macular hole. It is not important to have it in one piece, but um, you may have it in fragmented, especially in these cases, the ILM is thin and it is almost um, impossible to have it in one piece. Now the inverted flap has been completed and now I'm going to enlarge the uh, eye lamp peeling, reaching as far as possible, usually to the edge of the staphyloma. Here it is again. The direction of peeling is, is around the macular hole and it should be done tangential to the surface of the retina slowly allowing the tissue to relax from the traction of the peeling, reaching here to the edge of the staphyloma. And then this is the flap. Base vitrectomy, in my opinion, is very important. And you have to, and then, Air, I think air is sufficient because the size of this globe is huge and there is no need to use a gas. This is the pre-operative and the post-operative picture of the OCT taken one month post-operatively. The retina is attached, the hole is closed and vision improved to 0.3 and then after five months, the vision improved to 0.6. Another case of recurrent retinal detachment, please notice that this is not the ILM, it is um, a part of the posterior hyaloid or an epiretinal membrane. So this is not the ILM proper, and this is known from the texture and the friability of the tissue. So you have to look for the um, ILM. This is the pre-operative and the post-operative picture, and this is after silicon oil was removed and the vision improved to 0.5.
tamponade was air in 15 eyes and silicone oil in 17 eyes. Retinal reattachment and hole closure was achieved in 100% of cases. Macular buckling was not needed to achieve this result in any of the case, and the vision improved by three or more lines. These are some of the cases, the pre- and the post-operative pictures, and the rationale is that peeling the ILM decreases the um, flexibility of the retina, allowing it to um, accommodate to the staphyloma. And the inverted ILM flap stimulates proliferation of glial cells that fill the macular holes, and this improves the um, closure of the hole and retinal reattachment. This is again the, during the intraoperative pictures. So in conclusion, in myopic macular hole retinal detachment, I think that a combination of ILM inverted flap to cover the macular hole as suggested by Jersey Navarowski and Zosia, um, and the ILM peeling to the edge of the staphyloma, and this technique is associated with a high rate of uh, hole closure and retinal reattachment. May I invite you all to um, our uh, next meeting of the Egyptian Vitretinal Society that will be in uh, April between the 18th and the 20th, and it will be in Luxor, and you are all invited. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Congratulations for the beautiful uh, technique and beautiful videos. Uh, I would like to ask you, do you see any indications for the macular buckle? Well, uh, I was using the macular buckle um, um, since two years, and then at that time, um, I really, I fashioned a, a macular buckle, but I stopped using the buckle because using this technique, I'm, I'm really have a very good results, combining your technique and um, extending the peeling to the edge of the staphyloma. Uh, thank you. And another question is, uh, what about your observation about the photoreceptors after such, such surgery? So we know there is some glial prolif proliferation, but what about photoreceptors? In yeah. idiopathic macular holes, we see some kind of regeneration. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I had no time to present uh, this, but if you look at the OCT on the follow-up, you can see that in some cases there is reg regeneration of the outer retina. And um, this is uh, real, and this is associated with the improvement in the visual acuity in these patients. And um, I was astonished to find um, many of these patients can read. And even when we look at the back of, on the, on the fundus, you see that the, 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 the macula is degenerated, and um, you, you feel that there are no photoreceptors, but this patient can read. Thank you. And questions from the audience? Hello, Hassan. I'm Leonora from Argentina. Uh, did you drain the subretinal fluid in the retinal detachment? Uh, and when you choose to put silicon oil? Okay. Um, well, uh, in, if we have two types of detachment associated with macular holes. Those filling only the staphyloma and those reaching up to the orasrat or to the periphery. In those filling the staphyloma, you don't have to drain. Because if you try to drain the subretinal fluid, you will suck the flap in your flute needle or, or um, your, um, uh, the vacuum or by the probe. But uh, you ha all you have to do is to inject air and put your flute needle or the vitrectomy probe at the optic disc with the aspiration port directed away from the macula, and then you drain, uh, the ex you do the exchange with air. And in the second post-operative day, uh, with the patient adopting a face-down position, the, um, the retina is attached. But if the detachment is extending to the periphery, then you are allowed to make a periphery, small peripheral retinotomy, inject PFCL, um, gather the ILM flap over the macular hole, over and not inside the macular hole, and then um, you have a complete reattachment of the retina. The second question is why I prefer to use air and silicon oil. Well, silicon oil, I use it in the, at the beginning in more frequent cases because I was not sure that this technique is going to uh, work. But um, later on, my use of silicon oil uh, be become, became less and the use of air uh, is much more. 
This is one point. The second point, in one-eyed patients, especially in recurrent cases, I do not want to expose these patients to more operations. So I may feel safe with the use of silicon oil. And the silicon oil is usually uh, removed after uh, two months, maximum three months. <coughs> Um, Dr. Hassan, um, I'm always thinking about the role of ILM in keeping the rigidity of the retina in macular holes. The ILM is a, like a glossy membrane, it's not an elastic membrane. So if it's the, the, it fits the scaffold that keeps the retina up, we should probably see this on OCT as wrinkling or as an abnormal uh, shrinkage of the ILM. So do you have an explanation why an extensive ILM peeling would allow the retina to go back while it is not as rigid when we peel it as it should, and it's not shown on OCT as well? Well, the, the ILM um, does not contract. Um, what is happening, what, is, what is really is that the cells proliferate on the surface of the ILM. This is one um, opinion. The other view is that in these cases, the ILM may be rigid, and um, uh, rigid for reasons that we do not know. But um, Intraoperative finding is that once the ILM is removed, this rigid retina um, becomes more um, f uh, mobile and it can be um, attached to its place um, much more easier. And also in the post-operative um, period, you see that the retina in the next day is completely attached and um, this um, for the follow-up of two years, I uh, have no single recurrence. It should be right, in theory. But have you noticed any difference in ILM texture or thickness between attached retina in, uh, in, in diabetics, for instance, and detached retina in myopic macular hole? Is there a true difference between both of those or not? Well, the behavior of the ILM is totally different in, disease, in different disease entities. So the behavior of the ILM in... Uh, myopic macular holes is completely different from diabetic, uh, completely different from ma uh, idiopathic macular holes. So um, I think that the uh, pathology occurring in the ILM in different disease entities is completely different, and we have to work on this. Last short question. I have a technical question and a comment. Let's start with a technical question. You well said that if you use the backflash needle, you, on the whole, you risk to aspirate the ILM flap. So when you stain more than once, usually you have staining going through the hole under the retina. Do you think it's important to remove the staining or Well, not? it is, it is um, I, don't, I don't have to remove the stain. Um, usually um, the, the flap is covering the hole, so I think it is very small amount of um, stain pass into the uh, inside, from the hole into the RPE. And um, I, I don't think we have to remove the, the stain from the undersurface of the retina. And um, if you try to do this, uh, believe me, you will suck the... Um of course, I totally agree. And I think this states that the staining per se is not so toxic, even if a small amount is over there. Mostly of the toxic effect is when mechanically we inject straight to the RPE. Yeah. The comment, of course, is about the buckle. I have to make a comment about the buckle. And it's because, as I'm saying in my last talks, um, it's obvious that the ILM is increasing so much the closure rate because, because of many reasons, and it works on the retina. I think the role of the buckle is if we want to treat the staphyloma, it's different. It's the aim, is the goal that is different. It's not to treat the retinal detachment, but it's to treat the staphyloma per se, because we know that the staphyloma keeps increasing through, uh, through the whole life. And so uh, possible uh, new um, complications like atrophy progression and, uh, and recurrence might still be there. So I think it's, you know, two different goals, two different aims. Do I have a minute to respond? Or? Yes. Um, well, if you look into the, the back of the eye, um, usually it is not like a hemisphere. It may be bulging 
um, different places, especially in these pathological eyes. So tell me exactly where are you going to put your buckle? This is one point. The other point is that pressing on the back of the eye definitely decreases the vascularity of this already compromised area. So uh, this has to be, to be proven by angiography, by um, the studying the blood flow in this area. But um, uh, what I, I'm, my concern is about where exactly are you going to put the buckle? And could you guarantee that this buckle is going to stay at this place for life? Because you are, all the buckles are sutured outside and away from the posterior staphyloma. So nothing, is, nothing can guarantee that this buckle will, is going not to shift to one or the other side. This is, um, this is a very important point. You cannot guarantee that this is going to stay in place for life. And this may, may need um, follow-up for cases of buckles and cases with this technique um, in order to... I have, okay, microphone. Uh, two answers. One, you have a fibrotic um, covering of the buckle two months after the buckle implantation. So the buckle is not moving anyhow, and I can show you the pictures in uh, like eight years follow-up. Second, you don't decrease the blood flow, and I am observing because I'm measuring this in long term and increasing choroidal thickness. I think we have no more time, right? Yes, thank, thank you. you. And now I would like to... Thank you.